Thank you so much. <laughs> and um, well, hi again, Carrie. <laughs> Thank you so hi. much for talking to me. Um, just to start things off, I was wondering if you could talk a little about um, the genesis of your involvement with the film, like what drew you to it. What I love most about the movie is like how tonally it can switch from like these humorous, fun parts, seeing stars are blind with Paris Hilton, then it like effortlessly um, transitions to something more serious, darker, grittier. So I was wondering if you could talk about like what drew you to the film and why you wanted to jump on board. Yeah, I mean, I, it was really the, initially just the writing was so strong. Um, and I, and it was that shift between sort of comedy and tragedy and uh, a thriller and, you know, almost a horror um, that I was so um, immaculately drawn in the, in the script. And I was so excited to sort of meet the person um, whose head that had all come from, because it was just so kind of, um, and I, I felt like every, you know, five pages in the script, I sort of had all of my expectations flipped and I didn't, you know, I loved not knowing where it was going or how it was going to wind up, even to the last like 20 pages where you're just still questioning things. Um, so that was really exciting. And it was just one of those parts that I felt like I f felt like ownership over. I felt like if anybody else did it, I would have been kind of really annoyed and mm -hmm. <laughs> unable to sit through it in a cinema. So um, yeah, it, it, it just felt like a, a no brainer really. I'm glad it worked out because your performance was awesome. <laughs> um, so Cassie's character is extremely refreshing because I feel like she offers like an unsanitized, authentic look at rage that we don't often get to see in cinema, especially from uh, women characters. So maybe we could talk about that aspect and that nuance of Cassie and getting to showcase like real anger and real rage, <laughs> like in a in a in a movie. For <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was it was interesting because it definitely. You know, Emerald always talked about it as, you know, being, you know, a, a sort of examination of female rage uh, and one that felt kind of more realistic than a lot of the kind of representations that we've seen before in that, you know, I think it was really Emerald asking the question to herself of if, if someone did something to hurt my very best friend, you know, what would I do? And um, I probably wouldn't sort of don PVC and go and sort of you know slaughter a bunch of people but I might <laughs> I might do it like this um was really the question and so um I think it is um you know an examination of of how you know um that sort of rage can be expressed both kind of um you know psychologically and um uh, but also I think you know for me it was really important to start the whole thing from a place of um love because i do think that it's it's much more an act of love than it is of hate you know this is she's only doing this because she loves someone so much that she couldn't bear the injustice of what happened to her um and so i think you know to kind of start all of it it was important to look back at who cassie was before this happened and what her relationship was with nina and what nina meant to her um because it's really just like incredible loyalty what mm -hmm. she's doing she just, you know, the whole world is telling her to get over it and move on. And she's just saying, like, no fucking way. I'm going to, mm -hmm. I'm not resting until this is, you know, until I see justice. And um, and there's something I really admired about that. Um, and, uh, and, was, and was, yeah, definitely her kind of driving factor. And that kind of leads me to my next question, because I feel like Cassie is also, like you mentioned, she's extremely loyal. And she's a really good example of what, like, having at least one, uh, ally in your life is like so learning um if you could talk about like getting to portray that especially since her loyalty is to another woman and i feel like this is also this is a revenge film but it's also just a much a love story between these two women who mm. she uh cassie obviously really really cared for nina now that she's gone she can't like <laughs> get over it so i was wondering if you could talk about that uh, <laughs> that aspect of cassie yeah i think it's it's interesting emerald commented on this the other day that we we often see sort of revenge movies or um sometimes these kind of dynamics play out but it's usually um sort of a man um acting on behalf of their daughter or you know um mm -hmm. sort of, it's very often we very rarely see this kind of sisterhood portrayed on screen and it's such a massive part of um of your you know upbringing if you if you have that closest friend in the world it can inform so much about you and um, and you really experience so much of the world with that person and 
Um, and so I think we wanted, you know, I think what Emerald's done so beautifully is like shown a representation of that sorority and sisterhood on screen, but without ever even seeing Nina. I mean, you never see her, you never mm -hmm. see, you know, but you just, the, you, the audience is left to imagine her. And I think in some ways, because you have that space to imagine, you can kind of put your own person in there. Um, and, um, you know, that's sort of far better than, you know, having a flashback to an actor that we don't have any associate or connections with, that you are left to sort of ponder that person. Mm. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's, it, it's sort of an untapped market of stories about, mm. I mean, there are very, there are lots of untapped stories about mm. women, but particularly that relationship. I like the way you explained it. I didn't think about it like that, but yeah, we don't really get to see Nina, but <laughs> so we get yeah. to like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, so um, Cassie is kind of like, not a loner, but she's been like alienated from a lot of people in her life, but she found a friend in the coffee shop with Gail, who was played by <laughs> LGBTQ icon Laverne Cox. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering just like, what was it like just collaborating with her, especially since she means so much to the queer community. And it's nice. Oh, it's always nice getting to see someone uh, so valued by the community, like uh, being at this big like uh, studio film. So <laughs> what was it like working with and calibrating with Laverne? She was just such perfect casting for that part because I think, um, you know, Cassie's really closed herself off to pretty much everybody, but um, Laverne has a quality of making people feel completely at ease that she sort of imbued in Gail. And I think, mm. um, you know, there's a way that she's sort of, if anyone can, Gail can kind of break down Cassie's defenses. And also she doesn't stand for any bullshit, which is mm -hmm. the same as Laverne. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I think, you know, that that was a quality that she brought to the part that she's sort of, um, she's got a freedom in the way that she talks and the way that she espouses her views that, um, that Gail has. And she's just so delightful. I mean, she was just a complete delight to have on set. And she was in the, I think the second, third, and you know, the, the second day of shooting, we started doing the cafe and we were in the cafe for the rest of that week. So we did all of our stuff first. And it's like the beginning of the shoot and everyone's kind of feeling their way in. And she was just an absolute delight and hilarious and mm -hmm. made everyone feel so at ease. And um, so, yeah, she was, she was kind of the perfect best friend for Cassie. And I think because she brought so much kind of, history to that performance and you really feel like there's a relationship there I think it's all the more kind of powerful at the end of the mm. film when you know you see the what she what Cassie sort of left for her I mean it's a bit of a spoiler so you'll figure out how to put that mm -hmm. in but um but yeah she was she was amazing I love seeing their dynamic on uh on screen I was like maybe this could be like its own <laughs> it's movie so, or something, but... I know. Well, that's the thing is when you get to work with someone like Laverne, you get like a couple of days in, you're like, let's just make the whole film about us. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like such a fun little, um, you could do like a whole sitcom of just the two of us running yeah. a coffee shop and being like rude to our customers. But <laughs> <laughs> I would have loved that for, yeah. personally. <laughs> and um, Laverne wasn't the only legend you collaborated with. Um, Emerald with Killing Eve and then she wrote and directed the entire movie. Was it like working with Emerald Fennell, just like who crafted this amazing like world and this story and this like, yeah. <laughs> just despicably talented. That's the problem with Emerald. She's just <laughs> too much going for her. Um, yeah, I mean, she's just amazing, Em. She's like unbelievably kind and wonderful friend first and foremost. And then, you know, really just one of the most inspiring directors I've worked with, just a complete clarity of vision and so, so, smart on storytelling and performance and and also you know able to make the set feel like fun you know we were mm. definitely handling you know sensitive stuff but you know there was an there was an atmosphere on set that was just like everyone wanted to be there everyone loved their job you know where there was any possibility to have fun we were having fun um and she just made everyone feel completely comfortable and I think that's why you know, we're brilliant actors, but you've got to make a set feel like a place where people can feel comfortable and welcome. And mm. she just made that. She made the set feel like the most warm, lovely, like family living room that you could, you know, people just walked in and immediately felt at ease. And I think that does bring out people's best work when the set's like that. Well, that's good to hear, especially since like the subject matter of the film is <laughs> actually kind of dark. <laughs> No, I mean, we had a really good time. I, I always, I said to Bo, like three or four days into filming, I was like, I can't believe 
how much I'm laughing on set. Like, this is so much fun. Like, <laughs> I've had like great times on jobs before, but like being surrounded by comedians and, um, you know, and them sort of letting loose and doing their thing and just me trying to keep a straight face is just, yeah, it's so much fun. I loved it. And um, I guess just to wrap things up, um, I know I'm, I'm not going to try to give away too much about the film, but the ending really was like, like completely unforgettable and something that will probably like spark tons of conversations like in the coming months and the coming years so can you just talk about what it was like uh just like crafting that ending with um emerald and like uh how you got through it and like what was your like initial reaction when you figure out like that was like the the big finale yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I think it was like probably like an audience member i sort of thought like no <laughs> <laughs> um, you know you you it's not the ending that you want. You want her to sort of, you know, you want to kind of slow walk away, you know, smoking a cigarette with a burning building behind you. Like that's what you really hunger for. But, um, but we just, yeah, Emerald was always absolutely steadfast on the fact that that just wasn't truthful. And that, you know, you, you when it comes to a film like this, you have to be honest, you know, um, if you're dealing with this kind of subject matter, there's no point in, um, you know, if you really want to do it properly, there's no point in sort of making the fantasy version of it. And the fantasy version is that she walks away unscathed, having completed her mission. But mm. we just know that that's not the truth. And when it comes down to it, when a weapon is introduced into situations like this, you know, more often than not, and the vast, vast majority of cases, the, you know, the woman will end up in that, um, on the, you know, on the floor and it just wasn't it was just a lie to do it any other way so we knew that we needed to do it and we wanted to do it in a way that was honest and so emerald asked her father-in-law who is an ex-police officer how long it would take to asphyxiate somebody and they said he said it would take two and a half minutes so em wanted it to be one two and a half minute single take mm -hmm. shot um and not to cut into it and sort of you know to to because i think it, it would trivialize the whole thing if you could see any kind of stunt work or you could see kind of cutting around and it needed to be the audience just needed to watch as unpleasant as it is that that's the truth if you want to see you know that's the truth of what it looks like in it and, and we watched the stunt team do it because they offered us a stunt team which we didn't use in the end but they mm -hmm. kind of showed us um and it was horrible and Chris and I you know hated watching it and the whole crew felt very somber that day but um but yeah so it was like one of those scenes that's not not much fun to do really physically exhausting um but i think is you know was absolutely right for the film um mm -hmm. and you know chris's performance in it is just so brilliant just like unbelievable very painful for, for an audience to watch and, um but chris's work is just really amazing um but um but yeah it's a it's just yeah a shocker isn't it it's yeah it's a sucker it's like a sucker gut punch but yeah chris yeah. played a good like sleaze bag like so well it was like terrifying <laughs> like, low key I know. He's very, and he's such a nice guy that's yeah. the thing yeah uh, yeah, yeah. but I, I did like that subversion of uh tropes so i, I appreciate that i'm sure audiences will appreciate that <laughs> well, that's all the time i have left carrie thank you again so so much for taking thank time out so to talk much. to me this, to yeah. this film was like probably like at the top of my list for 2020 so congratulations again can't wait for more oh. people to see it Thank you. That's so kind. Thank you. Well, have a good Christmas and break and everything. You too. Bye. <laughs> Bye.